Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about Sinister and Sinister 2. But before we do that, if you'd please give my thumbs up, that would be great. And if you want more videos like this, you can subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time I post a video. So anyway, into the two movies we want to talk about today. So I don't want to give any spoilers for either of these movies. I'm just going to kind of give my opinions on them lightly. Because uh, I want you guys to be able to go watch them. Because they are really, they are both very good movies. There are just some things that I didn't necessarily care for. The first movie I want to talk about today is Sinister. It's actually a 2012 film. And I just watched it this year. <laughs> and I've seen it around for a while. I just, I don't know, it just didn't really catch my eye too much apparently. And just the other day, I think I was on Netflix, and I think Friday, and actually, they put the first one on there. And I was like, oh, I should watch this. Why? The first one's on here. And maybe it's just recommended to me, but I swear they only had the second one on there for the longest time. I could be wrong. So the first one is on there now, currently, as of today, which is, what is it? May 4th. Oh, yeah. May the 4th be with you. Of course it's May 4th. Anyway, so I watched Sinister 1 and it was really good the only thing that kind of drove me nuts is the movie which i mean i guess it's like a director's standpoint or how they want to do it whatever but it's so dark <laughs> like the movie itself is just so dark and i get like it's a scary movie and it's creepy and a lot of stuff like happens like at night and stuff but it, even like even when they're having dinner and stuff like it's just it's so dark and I'm like turn a light on like half of this the whole time I'm watching this movie like it's good and there's like jump scares and there's like really creepy stuff going on but I'm just like turn a freaking light on people because half the stuff would be a lot less scary if the light was just on I mean I get it's a scary movie but like if your life if this stuff's really happening in your life turn the light on I, I don't understand <laughs> So the plot of this movie, without giving away too much, is a true crime writer who moves his family into a neighborhood that recently had a murder of an entire family. And he ends up finding films in his house, and they were like old films, I'm not sure what kind. And the what's on these films is actually really disturbing like even watching that like through the movie like you can tell how disturbed like the character is but it's also like disturbing in itself and especially like once you like get into the movie and like know what's going on you're like wow that's that's kind of messed up <laughs> it's really like I don't know it kind of gets to you a little bit I don't know I, I, I thought it was really good <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool that they did that like the whole movie is just kind of disturbing and just creepy and it has just this very dark undertone in almost every aspect and in that regard I really liked it so it's kind of weird to like that but I mean I did so it's fine I think you'll like it too I would have to say though so the two things that really bugged me about this first the first sinister is how how dark the lighting was I'm just like there were just, when it's like dark, like it's nighttime, and yeah, I get it, but they were just like, there's times they're literally just eating dinner, and it's like, turn a light on. I mean, nothing was happening, like just turn a light on, I just don't understand. And the second of all, which really was kind of a bummer for me, it was the very end. I don't want to say what happens, but for me it was extremely anticlimactic. Like, I felt like this movie was, it really build up everything well like it had good characters that kind of brought everything together and then the ending was just very um kind of a letdown i have to say so overall i would recommend the first sinister uh like i said the ending for me was pretty anticlimactic and just like the lighting but i guess that's just the director's um choice there are a lot of really creepy parts in this movie and just a lot of things where it's like you want to look away because it's like creepy but you can't look away because it's so well directed and acted out I don't know I really I it's like one of those movies where it's kind of it reminds me a little bit of a more low budget movie but it's like high quality terror yeah low budget movie high quality terror yeah I just that, that sounds good actually it's about sums it up <laughs> So overall, I would recommend the movie, even though the ending was not my favorite way for the situation to end, but to each their own. So you might actually enjoy it and you might think it's a great ending. Never know. Um, so let's take a little pause right here before we get to Sinister 2. And if you have not already, please like this video. I would really appreciate it. Please subscribe, hit the little bell so you're notified every time I post another video like this one. And leave a comment if you 
uh, have seen this movie, if you're gonna watch this movie, or another movie that I should do a review on. Appreciate it. Okay, on to Sinister 2. So, in my opinion, apparently it's an unpopular opinion, once I googled Sinister and kind of was getting some uh, facts on like the background about it, a lot of people did not like 2. I, on the other hand, thought 2 was better than 1. <laughs> um, I, I like the plot in 1 better, but the execution and the end and everything kind of was a letdown for me a little bit. So I think Sinister 2 was actually done better in my opinion. I liked it more. I thought the ending was a lot better. Um, I thought it was... I don't really know what word to use, but it was just better in my opinion. I feel like it had more of a plot. Even though one, I liked the plot in the beginning more. Two, it actually, like, you got to know the characters, you cared about the characters more. I feel like you were more attached to the characters in number two, and I cared more about what happened to them, I think. So, maybe that's why I liked it more. And then, again, I don't want to give away too much because I don't want to spoil the first one or the second one. But, there is a character, and you'll see if you watch these, but there's a character who is in both of them, and there is just, like, this one or two minute splurge where they say all this stuff that's happened between one and two and it's like a lot like there was like i would say this because it won't matter but there's like a whole trial and they are talking about all this stuff that happened in their life and all i'm like where's that movie where is the movie following this certain character and their journey in between one and two because that's the movie that i want to see all right it, when you if you watch sinister two one and two you will know what I'm talking about. You'll be like, okay, this person is like a hero, this person really comes out on top, and this person does not have enough recognition, in my opinion. I think they need their whole own movie. I mean, do like a Sinister 1.5 or a Sinister 3. I did see where they were supposed to have a Sinister 3, and it was supposed to release last year. Um, again, I just Googled this today, so I wasn't aware of this last year. But I guess the director said, um, again, I was on Google, but it looked like he made comments as to, like, not all movies are winners or something like that. So I think they were in the midst of it, and then it just wasn't coming along the way he wanted it. And obviously there could have been more, I don't know, drama behind the scenes, and that could have just been what he said to whoever asked. But... Yeah, I guess there's not going to be a Sinister 3, at least not anytime soon. I would like to see this character have, like, their own movie, because they just, they need it. If you watch it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't want to give too much away, but it's very interesting, and I don't know, you should watch it. So it looks, it kind of looks like a low-budget movie, in my opinion. Again, I mean, all you're seeing is, like, the cover photo and, like, a little snippet of, like, a trailer on Netflix. And I feel like even the picture in the front, like, now that I've seen it, it looks kind of cool. But before I've seen it, the, um, it's like a kid walking, like, dragging their hand down and there's, like, blood on the wall and it comes down to, like, it looks like a clown-like face or something. And you're like, I don't know. But if you watch it, it actually, like, makes sense and it's not, it is, it's not as dumb as you would think it would be. <laughs> At least in my opinion, but... Yeah, so I would check those out. And once again, please, if you like this video, uh, give it a like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you're notified, and leave a comment if you like these videos, if you're gonna watch these videos, or what other videos I should review because I spend a lot of time watching horror movies. It's like my favorite thing. So I think you're gonna see a lot more of these in the future, and they will only get better. And yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And 